calcium hardness. This is simple to understand. Calcium hardness is simply the reading in parts per million of the level of calcium in your water. Ideally, you want to keep your calcium in between 175 and 400 parts per million. This can be difficult in the North Texas area because the tap water typically has anywhere between 125 and 175 parts per million calcium. Why is this important? Calcium doesn't evaporate. So in the heat of the summer, while you're losing anywhere from 3 to 4 inches of water per day, and that's being refilled with tap water, you're adding more calcium into your pool. Every time you add calcium hypochlorite shock, you're also adding more calcium into your pool. This is why we recommend rotating between calcium hypochlorite shock and non-chlorine potassium monoprosulfate. This will help to control the amount of calcium you're adding through your shocking. We also recommend using sequestering agents like Supreme Plus or SC1000. Supreme Plus is an annual additive, SC1000 is added monthly. These chemicals create a barrier in between calcium and your pool surfaces. This is the best way to prevent scaling from occurring. So, how do we test for calcium? Let's check out this video on a Taylor K2005 test kit that shows you how to test for your calcium hardness. Calcium hardness is the blue reagent. And if you look at the instructions for calcium hardness, you will notice that there's two different ways to do this. The first way is listed in five steps. The second way is at the bottom of the instructions for calcium, and it says when high CH is anticipated. The second way is the easier way to test for calcium. With calcium, you don't need to get an exact number like 410.3357. We need to know a good range because we're just trying to keep our calcium within a certain range. So the second way for testing calcium hardness reduces the amount of drops we have to use in half. And we have to use quite a few drops. If you'll notice on the first set of instructions for calcium, the very first reagent you have to add, you have to add 20 drops of that. That sounds crazy. So we like to do it the second way, which is when high calcium hardness is anticipated, which in the North Texas DFW area, we can anticipate high levels of calcium hardness. Now, to test for calcium hardness, we're going to use the large compartment again. Make sure it's been rinsed out. Take the water from the pool sample that you got and fill up the large compartment to the bottom notch, which is 10 milliliters. Now, take the first blue bottle, R0010, and add 10 drops. The next step is to take R0011L, which is the calcium indicator. It's a purplish looking liquid. We need to add three drops of that. Once you've added the three drops, we need to, again, swirl that sample. Once the sample has been swirled and the pinkish purple color is uniform, we can begin doing our titration. Take the last blue bottle, R0012, and while you're swirling the sample, very, very slowly add a drop at a time of R0012. Count the number of drops it takes to turn that pinkish purple color into a solid blue like the color of the Taylor test kit case, or like my shirt. Let's pretend it took nine drops. Each drop represents 25 parts per million calcium hardness. So, if you have nine drops, multiply nine by 25, and that'll give you a reading of 225 parts per million. That will put you in the proper range of in between 175 and 400 parts per million. Calcium hardness should be tested at least once a month. If you've been shocking heavily like in the summer, it's a good idea to test it two to three times a month just to make sure you don't go anywhere where you might need to use a sequestering agent to help prevent calcium scaling. Now, let's pretend that we had tested the calcium and it was at 100 parts per million. That's just too low. When calcium hardness is too low, you're at risk for your pool foaming, as well as your pool water being corrosive to your equipment and other surfaces. So we need to make sure we do have a proper amount of calcium. Too little calcium, corrosive, aggressive water. Too much calcium, water that likes to dump calcium scale on your tile and your plaster and everywhere else. So there's a happy balance here. We need to make sure we have it between 175 and 400. So if I test my calcium harness and it's at 100 parts per million, I need to add some calcium. I'm going to need to add about 100 parts per million calcium so I can get it up to about 200. 200 is a good range for calcium. 
The treatment table to increase calcium harness in your pool water is on page 62 in the Taylor Handbook. So, I'm at 100 parts per million right now. I need to add another 100 parts per million to get to 200. Using this chart, I go down to 100 parts per million and go over to 10,000 gallons. I need to add 12 pounds of calcium chloride in order to raise my calcium hardness from 100 to 200 parts per million. Calcium chloride can simply be broadcast across the surface of your pool. So, calcium hardness. We want to keep it between 175 and 400 parts per million, ideally. This can be difficult to do. So to prevent calcium scaling, it's best to get a leg up on it by utilizing a sequestering agent like Supreme Plus or SE1000. This concludes the section on calcium hardness. To continue with chemistry school, please see the video on cyanuric acid. Thank you for choosing RiverbendPoolSupply.com for all your pool needs.